Morning Chicago, this is your reporter Zach here, and I am here with our good friend Jurgis. He is our inside piece to the city of Packingtown, and he is here today to tell us more about what's going on in that town and the rough struggles he's been going through because of it. Now, the police in your town, they're said to be pretty rough on you guys. Um, can you explain to us what's going on with that? Um, the police are very rough in um, the city of Packingtown. They are very um, unjust. They don't care about um, us immigrants, especially um, when I was confronted um, during a confrontation. I didn't get a chance to explain what my side of the story, and I, I was harshly thrown into a jail cell, and um, I wasn't treated right um, then on by the police. I was viewed as a um, criminal. Wow. Well, speaking of which, um, men such as yourself are categorized as wild animals. Yes. Why, why, why are people saying that about guys like you? Uh, we are characterized as wild animals because that's how the society of Packingtown chooses to view us. Um, because we're immigrants and we're foreign to this country or to this land, um, they have the perception that we um, are animals and that we're kind of like savages because we don't speak their language. Um, we don't eat the same way they do, the way they talk. And so anything we do to try to change our minds, it doesn't work because once a society starts to think a certain way, or they start stereotyping you, it's hard, hard to change their minds at all. Well, that is absolutely true. And um, the, the snow in your city, when you get back to the city, it is not white like usual snow. They said it was black down there. Um, can you tell us why? Um, the snow was black because of all the um, factories in Packingtown. Um, they all let pollutants in the air, and that caused that causes the air to become um, black or gray. It causes the snow to become gray. Um, our city's pretty much like a dump. Um, you pretty much live on top of sewages and garbage. A lot of homeless people, so it's it's sad. It's very vulgar. Interesting. Well, we heard something happened to your wife, Anna, and we really didn't know what happened. We just know some wrong things took place. So. Um, what happened to her and how did it affect you? Um, my wife, Anna, um, tried to go into labor um, with my, my um, baby girl, and um, but it was too early going to labor. Um, we didn't have enough money for a doctor, and I had blown um, all my money at a um, bar because I like to drink, so that left us no money to pay a doctor. So she tried to have the baby um, independently, and um, the result, she didn't have the baby, the baby died, and so did um, my wife. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, was the reason you were drinking due to the depression of all that the town has put you through, through their companies and systems? Um, yes, it, um, it was because of that. Um, a lot of pressure, a lot of depression, a lot of, you know, to carry on, to take care of my, fa um, my family, excuse me, um, that this caused me to just want to, um, the drinking took away all the pain. It, it, well... That's really rough on you, and after that situation, it was really rough on you to find a job. Um, how did you eventually find employment? Um, it was hard to find a job because um, there were no jobs available at the time when I was on the blacklist, um, you know, blacklist, so I couldn't get a job. But um, I tried to go to the fertilizer plant, and I asked the foreman they had a job for me. They didn't have a job for me. I said, can I get on a list? They said there was no list, um, that I never had a job in the future. So um, I went to one of my friends from the um, um, Uber, um, excuse me. I went to one of my friends from the labor union, and he was able to get me a job at the Harvester Trust. Um, the work conditions there are very um, good. Um, um, the pay, it pays good, and the food they actually have good food there for um, employees to eat. So I'm satisfied with that part of my life. That's good, and you beat me to my next question. You were wondering how you. Gained employment, you already told us. Well, yeah. got from my baby. <clears throat> now, you said before that you were beginning to feel hope, like your life was finally gonna get better, and you just hit that wall and everything just crashed down and ruined everything. What happened? Um, this is my life began to you know come back together. You know, pieces was coming starting to fit back together. Um, my son passed away. He drowned to death. So that just sent me back. So way, way back, I lost three members of my family. And so, you know, after that, I just really don't have any motivation with this. You know, I just don't want to live now. I don't really got nothing to live for. That's why I have to live for with my son. 
Oh, that's really rough on you, and it's really bad how that town is treating its people, and how people think of themselves higher than others, and disrespect each other that way down there. And the pollution is also bad for your health, and that just makes it that much worse. Right. And they need to take care of families that are going through these trials. Right. Well, that's all we have for you today, folks. I'm here with Jurgis. This is Reporter Zach. Have a good night.